We're at Congregation here in Con County Mayo, and uh, I'm in the company of David Gluckman, who's the author of uh, an amazing book titled That Shit Will Never Sell. Show us the cover there, uh, David. Fantastic. That's really good. And if you look on the front, it says, it will sell. You are the developer, or the inventor, I think is correct to say, of uh, a drink called Bailey's, which has sold how many bottles worldwide, David? Oh, I hate to say, more than a billion, I think. Um, it's, it's a resounding success, and it's all started in, in 1973, was it? 1973, the brand launched in uh, 1974. And um, the, what was really interesting about it, uh, David, is the kind of the, the direct approach that you took to all of that. Um, an opportunity opened up. The Irish government uh, had uh, uh, created a tax holiday for, for export brands, and you were tasked with developing a an alcoholic drink, uh, which would be an export brand for Ireland. But you were telling me this morning you took your inspiration from pre previous work you had done uh, with Tony O'Reilly and the Irish Dairy Board. Exactly. I was uh, steeped in Irish dairy folklore through my association with O'Reilly and uh, working for the company that developed the Kerrygold brand. And so I took what I learned from Kerrygold and tried to apply it to a drink. And, and was that, what, what, were you just tasked with coming up with a drink or did you have the idea because of Ireland and the experience you'd had, had of marketing a dairy product that maybe there was a, a crossover here possible between, uh, say, a liqueur and, uh, and milk or cream? It was just a lucky connection between two bits of experience and... Uh, we asked ourselves the question, what happens if you add cream to Irish whiskey? It didn't taste very good, but we modified it a bit in a very Heath Robinson kind of way. And um, the rest is history, I suppose. It's an amazing story as you describe it in the book, uh, in the book uh, David, and you talk about going out to buy the ingredients and going back to the office and mixing them up and trying them out. Uh, it's very vivid for you, I think, to this day, is it, the, the memory of that experience? Well, the, um, we named the brand... I remember Tony O'Reilly said, uh, never use typical Irish names, family names, for brands. He said they sound whimsical. So O'Reilly's Irish cream might have not... Uh, uh, he would have said he wouldn't have bought that. But we had a restaurant below our office in Soho in London called Bailey's Bistro, and Bailey's seemed the, per the perfect Irish name. And I discovered after we recommended it, there was a, a very ancient restaurant in Dublin called the Bailey. And that kind of reinforced the thought. And, and you even in, invented um, characters, I think. You invented uh, was it two brothers that were the Bailey brothers? Or? Well, no, there was a story. Um, D David Dand is one of my great heroes. And the man who really deserves all the credit for Bailey's. David um, called me up in July and said, we can't just call it Bailey's, we need initials. And it happened to be the week of the Open Golf Tournament, and I was looking at the sports page in the paper, and there was some mention of RNA uh, talk about pin placement. So I said to David, why don't we have two initials? Let's call it RNA Bailey. And he said, great, let's do it. What's, what's wonderful about the story, David, is, um, and this was a key point that you made last night uh, in your presentation at Ashford Castle. You said, nowadays people will, will go with a plan B or a plan C or a plan D, and they'll go to pitch and they'll have loads of ideas. You guys put all your eggs in one basket, and creatively, I think you're saying, you didn't go with another plan, but creatively, um, you, were, you were so invested and sold on the idea of Bailey's that when you went to pre present it uh, and to pitch it, um, that was an advantage, was it? Well, it wasn't, but I think it, the longer you spend in the ideas business, the more you come to realize that um, coming up with multiple solutions to a problem is very easy. But coming up with one answer, I think that's what I am professionally required to do, is to so come up with an answer to a question. I mean, in, you don't, in management, uh, come up with a financial plan and then go and ask a whole lot of people which one they like best. You do what you think is best, it's professionalism. 
And as a professional creator of ideas, I figured it was incumbent upon me to come up with one idea and then go and find out if that idea works. But it should be 90% right. Um, I mean, I was never 100% wrong with an idea because I've been doing it for years. And, and I think the example as well is that you, you will refine an idea, you will develop an idea, you'll improve an idea, but um, as you say, you stick to your guns. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not only me, it's the client is the hero. The real, uh, the, the real test of an idea is whether the person who's putting his reputation against it and his job buys it. It's not, it's not me, I can recommend, but somebody has to buy. Now, your, your book and um, your talk last night, there are plenty of examples of, uh, of discouragement of, uh, for example, focus groups and uh, market research which didn't work out. People said, oh, that's a girl's drink, a woman's drink. Yeah. Uh, or um, women thought it was like, uh, um, uh, uh, was it Kaolin and... Uh, morphine, Kaolin and Morphine, yes. And, um, and, at this, and, and you, your encounter with the, the guy in the, the men's room who said, you know, that, that shit, what was he, you know, we'll who said that, well, that shit will never yeah. sell, that's the title of the book. Um, how, do you, how do you deal with that? Or how do you, I mean, one of the things you said last night was um, market research is overrated. It's hugely overrated. It's a very crude tool, in my opinion. But it's become a kind of um, fallback for uh, marketing people. Uh, it, 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 it stops them from making a decision. I mean, I think uh, there's a cliche which is consumers um, don't, uh, the consumers like what they know. They don't know what they like. And so you have to persuade them over time. And you have to uh, go against, I mean, the received wisdom. When the, the, the man who said Bailey's was a girl's drink was one guy and of course all the other people agreed with him but he was wrong and I was right and uh, which comes I think to this was your final point last night that your product has to be brilliant um, it has yeah. to be it, it does it come down to the quality of the product at the end of the day and maybe discounting perceived wisdom and looking at it and saying actually this is good Forget what it looks like, or forget what people think about it. It actually tastes good, and people I mean, people I, like it as a result. I think that's of that. it. I, I, I'm a great believer in uh, good products. I think it's all very well saying having fancy packaging, but if you've got a strong product story, you have something to sell. Now, Bailey's wasn't your only product, wasn't your only invention, and your book details um, a, a career spent in in, uh, yes. in product development and in the drinks industry. Um, You've just published it, uh, you're promoting it at the moment. What's the response been like? Oh, very, very favorable. I think what's pleased me is I, I, I tried to write a business book that was readable. To me, most business books are almost unreadable. And I also tried to write a book about brands which would appeal to people who weren't business people but ordinary uh, men in the street. So uh, I've had very nice responses both from academic people, business people and ordinary punters. Well, we're here in Con County Mayo for Congregation which is a unique kind of an event. Um, I, are you looking forward to the day ahead? Oh, delighted to be here. I was really flattered to be invited and it's been great.